Oh, hey guys. I thought I'd talk today just a little informal thing about um, this subject, generally of music theory. Sometimes music theory is kind of a scare, scary word. People get freaked out about it. They think it's something really confusing or, or um, you know, special. Uh, and, you know, we know people who say, I don't know any theory, I just play by ear. I think a lot of people are like that. And other people study it and really want to, you know, uh, shout from the highest uh, mountain about how great it is to know um, everything about music theory and everybody else falls somewhere in between there. Uh, you can identify yourself in that mix. Um, I think I'd like to just sort of demystify some things about music theory and maybe encourage the people who don't um, embrace it and maybe uh, kind of give some uh, perspective on people who get too hung up on it. <clears throat> I think it's wonderful to play by ear, and I think no matter how much theory you know, eventually, uh, at least as far as improvisation is concerned, we're playing by ear. Um, we don't want to be in our mind, you know, thinking of mathematical formulas or whatever when we're playing. We want to be in the sound of the music. Um, so hopefully, uh, to some extent or another, everybody plays by ear because if that means you're listening. Music means you're listening. It has to be that way. But um, I, I, on the other side of it, uh, f a few things that I think we could say about the sort of I don't know music theory kind of people, uh, or people who are afraid of it or even antagonized by it, is that it's just a tool for you to learn and be more comfortable on your instrument and get access to the sounds that your instrument can make. For instance, here's something that a lot of people don't really take into consideration. If you tune your guitar like this, like we used to in the old days, then you're using music theory, whether you know it or not. Because what's happening when we do that is you're shortening one string by uh, a certain number of half steps, half steps on the guitar or frets. Turns out it's a perfect fourth. And that is how the guitar is tuned. So the guitar is tuned in an interval called a perfect fourth, except for here, then it's tuned in a major third, and then it's back to a perfect fourth. So if you can tune your guitar, you have some access to music theory, because music theory describes what's happening when you're tuning your guitar, if you tune it to standard uh, tuning. If you tune it to an open tuning, well, then you're also using music theory to match pitches and change the orientation of the notes across the finger, uh, the nut so you can play open strings and have chords happen. Um, if you, uh, another thing people would get confused about, sorry, is that the names of the notes on the fingerboard is somehow music theory. Well, I'm not sure that that's true. I think that if a mechanic, if you took your car to a mechanic and he uh, saw a bolt that he needed to loosen, and he just picked up every wrench and tried it until he found the right one, he might not be so um, confident in that mechanic's ability. So most of the time, a mechanic knows that within a range of two or three wrenches the size of a bolt, and they can grab the one that's you know, 5 eighths or 9 sixteenths and just go right to work. So knowing the names of the notes on the fingerboard seems to be a big trouble for guitar players. But it's, you know, it's two feet worth of material. There's a lot of redundancy, and it just isn't that big of a, of a task if you set your mind to it. Um, I would say, regarding that, I would say uh, limit it to a small area on a single string until you really feel like you know the names of those notes. Now, knowing the names of notes is important for communication. So if you go to a rehearsal and someone says, uh, hey, uh, play a B minor seventh there instead of a B, you know, seven flat five, you're going to say, oh, wait, what's a B? <laughs> is that this one <laughs> or is that this one? And someone maybe has to show you. So knowing the names of the notes on the fingerboard and the basic chord qualities, major, minor, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, these kinds of things for most kinds of music. I mean, I can't imagine even the simplest pop music not uh, using some of those kinds of chords. Um, it, it just it's just knowing what tools are in your toolkit, you know. It's not some sort of, you know, college PhD thing. It's just knowing what the stuff on this thing is called. It's an interesting thing that just about everybody else in the world that we expect to 
to um, do anything knows the names of the tools that they're using, right? And so I would say that rather than thinking of music theory as some kind of egghead thing that doesn't apply to your musical life, uh, understand that even the most practical things like tuning your guitar, knowing the names of the notes, at least on the bottom couple of strings so you can build chords and, and communicate with your fellow musicians is, is a, in some ways it's a kind of music theory, but it's also just regular old knowledge that you probably would be um, um, helped or benefit to, to, to know. Um, so I don't know who I'm talking to here, actually. It could be that everybody says, oh, what is he talking about? I know the names of the notes, or I know the names of the chords, or I can tune my guitar. Okay, great. Well, if you fall into that camp, then, then um, you know, tell a friend. <laughs> it's great. Um, so the, on the other end of the spectrum is that people who want to have everything about music be sort of understood and theoretical and described and all that kind of stuff, too. Um, that's fine, unless you can't really do it. So knowing about music theory doesn't really help you to play music if you don't go to the next step, which is to play. Um, now, I just played a little passage of music, and I was not thinking of music theory when I did it. Um, but if I ever... Uh, was at home thinking, oh, I hear somebody playing something. Oscar Peterson just played this really nice lick. And uh, I maybe I take the lick from the record as as we do. That's one of the ways we learn. We can, you know, copy things. And then I still maybe want to take one more step, which is, well, why does that sound the way it sounds? What chord was he playing it over so that I can use it? What um, what set of notes was he playing against that chord so I can maybe make it into something else that I like the uh, the sound of? So if I have a dominant seventh leg, I can make that into a minor lick or a minor seven flat five lick or a diminished lick or whatever kind of thing I want to do if I know the way things are put together, if I know the difference between a dominant seventh chord and a minor seventh chord. So it's kind of uh, like... Uh, basic music theory, knowing how to build chords and those kinds of things, um, should not be seen as something that's going to, uh, you know, detract from your musicality or any of that kind of thing. It's just going to show you how you can use what you know to the greatest extent. And I think that's really a, an important thing. Uh, the idea that I'm trying to get across here is that music theory isn't or doesn't have to be some kind of, of scary thing. You're already using it whether you know it or not, when you play a D chord, or if you play E right there, um, you know, to know where to put your fingers on the thing and hear the sound of it, that's already a kind of ear training in music theory. Um, I don't think that we do ourselves any favors by saying, okay, now we're going to learn music theory, and we start by playing major scales on the guitar. Because although a major scale. I mean, everybody knows how to say do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. We learn it when we're two or three years old, right? Do, re, mi, right? So what's the big deal about playing it on the instrument? That's not a theory. It's just play your guitar, you know? And major and minor scales, along with pentatonic scales, make up the body of what we do when we play melodies on the guitar. So we should learn those things. So we have some, some uh, aids in being able to play melodies that are built from them, right? Music, music doesn't just pop out of the sky. Uh, it, it's, it uses, you know, at least Western music uses some principles that people who write music to some extent or another understand, right? And uh, then we're going to play songs either that we write or that someone else writes or we're going to improvise over those songs. It's a good idea to know kind of something about what's going on. You know, you don't have to say, well, this note works. Okay, I'm going to add that one. Wait a minute, that one doesn't work. I'm going to skip that one. You know, for every song you learn, you know, you could say, okay, what key is it in, man? Okay, good. And then, then you can go right to it. <laughs> so anyway, that's a little a little bit of about uh, music theory and how to uh, not be afraid of it and also not be attached to it. Both of those things on the extremes of this continuum are probably a problem. If we're really attached to music theory, sometimes we don't get to the music itself, the sound of it, the beauty of it. And if, we, if we're afraid of music theory, we might be, uh, uh, first of all, overlooking 
the fact that we already use music theory in much of what we do, and and then also that it can enhance our playing. You know, uh, if you're a blues player and you don't don't want to know music theory, you just want to play your Albert King licks or whatever. What happens when someone on a bandstand calls a song uh, like "Drowned in My Own Tears" and you or 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 um, something like that? And you say, "Oh." I don't do that one. My pentatonic scale doesn't work over that one. <laughs> hey, you don't want to do that, right? You, have, you can use your ear and you can fake it, but if you really want to get inside of it, you got to know something about the mechanics of the song. And then, because the mechanics of the song become something you're going to apply your tools to. And, and I think that would even just a little bit of knowledge about how to play, um, you know, an arpeggio or something like that might be very helpful in that kind of situation. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, visit my uh, Patreon page. Visit my True Fire channel. Check out my True Fire courses. Come see my what's happening on my website. And like and subscribe to the YouTube videos.